Now, say my name. The Rolling Bad Podcast. You're goddamn right. Welcome to the Rolling Bad Podcast, episode number 65, coming to you from the desolate wastelands of Albuquerque, New Mexico. We're recording on Saturday, March 30th, and I am your host, Doofus Dork Nuggets. With me tonight is XX and Triple X. <laughs> I knew you were going to read it verbatim. Right? I knew you would. You wouldn't replace your own name. <laughs> I'm Bill Costello. He's Elric Edge. Yep. <laughs> And tonight, it's just the two of us. Yeah, poor Ryan got called into work at the last minute, so Mm -hmm. he may join us later, I guess. Potentially. Yeah, we can hope, but it just won't be the same without it, man. Yep. We'll have to muddle through. It's all good. So, what are we going to do tonight, Bill? Uh, I think we're going to, you know, talk for a few hours and then edit and put the show out later. I don't know. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Like where it's going. Actually, we got, like, a ton of stuff because we have... All of the stuff that dropped for Chaos today. Yep. Plus, we're going to cover a little bit of the Corn Bloodbound book because... Oh, my God. Right. Is it cool? We're going to talk about the release from Adepticon, the release show, because they dropped some serious bombs there. Yep. And it seemed to be a lot of AOS stuff or AOS centers. I mean, there was a yeah. there was 40K stuff, but there was a big focus on AOS out there. That's good. Yeah, it's, it's good for all of way us. good. And then we're going to jump into our topic of the night. It's going to be a short topic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, that's one. Okay. Oh, boy. That's you one. started the counter on me. Yeah, because we're going to talk about what is going on with the Dwarden yep. or Dwarves. Uh, you know, where are they? What What's going on? Where, well, what's their future? Kind of talk about what information we have currently and mm-hmm. some of the differences in the factions yeah. that we've seen. And then... Um, which is kind of one of the interesting ways that we do our, our show is we come up with a topic and then do the research on yeah. it. And uh, which has kind of led us into an interesting position because there's really not that much out there I know. on Duarden at the moment. Which you'd think is weird because they, they have two armies yeah. well, in four. the game. Four. Dispossessed, Iron Weld. Oh, yeah. Corredron Overlords and Fire Slayers. Technically, yeah. So, so. And yet they're so little. Yeah. On them. You have to really dig to find, but we'll cover that, you know, when we get into it. It's kind of a weird situation and we're going to pontificate on where we think it's headed. Yeah. So, but for starters, um, I think right off the bat, we should thank old Darth Alec, Alexander Nygaard. Yep. Um, because we put out in the last show, we were talking about Archeon and we were kind of wondering aloud what he was doing from the moment of the end times to when he popped out in the mortal realms. And Alexander found us the passage that said he was basically making war in the realm of chaos all that time. Yep. So, and it doesn't say how long, but it said countless years, which probably means, you know, more than one and less than 50 billion. Somewhere in there. Yeah. Ballpark. Ballpark. Which uh, I think just gives more credence to him being a god. Yeah. To be honest. If he's so powerful that he can harness armies in the realm of chaos... Where the four chaos gods can actually manifest, air quotes, to lead their own armies against each other. And he's like, no, I got this. I'm going to go wreck things. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, Archeon is. Yeah, he's he's up there. He's a boss. He is definitely a boss. With uh, nothing better than Rend 1, but you know. Anyway. You know, but (laughs) it's a strong Rend 1. It is. It is. (laughs) So, I also want to send a shout out to uh, Tristan Gray, who is a new Patreon supporter, which is a lie because he was a Patreon Patreon supporter and then he wasn't and then he is again. I think he just likes you. Maybe he dropped it when it was just me and Ryan. And uh, then when you came uh, back, he came back. I'm, re- I'm bringing in that cash. I'm the yeah. cash cow of the you're show. The, you're making it rain. Yeah. <laughs> He's making it rain. Nice. <laughs> I'm glad I could do that for you. You are. You're, you're doing well. And I can't buy you a damn cubic shenanigans t-shirt. <laughs> right? What a loser. Oh, what's up with that? Oh God. I'm yeah, for you. everybody who saw that picture, I was the one who took it. Yeah. Because I couldn't be in it because I didn't have a t-shirt. <laughs> Apparently, I don't count. <laughs> only only stomached this show for 50 
eight ish episodes or however much it was, fifty four. What was the last one? I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you talk about hurting me to the soul. Uh I so uh Y Tech over there at Garage Hammer put out a thing of, you know, give us topics for our mailbag show because we want to mail this one in because we're going to Adepticon. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hey, they have it coming after what they did to me. (laughs) (laughs) So anyway, they get to my question and and Dave's like, hey, that's Bill from the Rolling Bad podcast. And Bob and they start talking about our podcast and somehow it gets around. Yeah, I think Elric just came back. And then Alex goes, well, yeah, at least now it'll be palatable. So, yeah, thank you, Alex. I really appreciate that. Nothing but love, brother. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. So, yeah, they hurt me. <laughs> so, I'm thinking there's going to be a crazy amount of new stuff. So, I know I've done some hobby. I did my, I painted out my Lady Olinder. Yeah. So. And that picture is doing rounds on uh, the Tweeterverse. Yeah, the Twitterverse. And, and it looks fantastic. Thank you. I'm I appreciate very, that. I'm very happy with that model. Yeah, I love her. I, I I needed to do a couple of more blends on, on her actual body to make it better. But, you know, yeah. for, for what I need to get done, I'll touch her up later. So nice. I like her. I, I really like her a lot. Yeah. She came out just kind of the way I had in my head. which is, Well, it helps. It's such a fantastic model, oh, too. Yeah, it's so gorgeous. And then, you know, the nice part about it is that, like, that little embroidery, that little filigree, if you will, on her on her bodice is just raised enough that you can edge – that with a brush and you don't have to sit there and try to paint it in with the tip of the brush, which I can't do because I'm, I've got such nervous hands. Yeah. So that was, I mean, all the details on that thing were so easy to pick out. It's nice. a wonderful model. Yeah, it is. And we'll get into some more wonderful models oh, here in a second. Mama. Mm-hmm. But I started painting on my black coach today. That's another thing I need for, uh, the old, uh, Randy fest. Cause remember we said, so Randy fest is coming. Yep. And yeah. So I got to have my fitting hundred points done. Plus I'm in the store league. So oh, I have to yeah. do 250 points of corn right away, which remind me, I have to give you the sheet to sign up. Did you sign up already? I have not. I, I have the sheet for you to sign up. Okay. Um, and I'm not going to edit that out, but <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. so yeah, that was my hobby. Nice. Yeah, that was my nice. hobby this week. Aside from cleaning up, and I know you did some, or having some. I've been trying to get some more of the trolls built. Yep. And I am, I'm having the army painted for me. There is a lady at our store Ooh. who just started painting. Yeah. And she could basically replicate box art. Yeah. Uh, well, without. I mean, yeah, it's fantastic. It's unreal <laughs> how, how good she is. Uh, yeah, so. she's just started, and she's won some awards at the store for yeah. painting competitions. Up against some pretty tight count, and I'm not just you know new painters. Right. She's up against the the studs yeah. that are around and taking and, it home. Um, so I asked her, and and she agreed to to paint my trolls because it's a relatively small count mm-hmm. army. Yeah, you know, it's not the goblin horde that's yeah. becoming next. Can you do 120 <laughs> of these? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> By next week. <laughs> so, well, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm totally, I'm looking forward to that. We'll, I'll be putting up some pictures and stuff mm-hmm. that, uh, she sends me. Yeah. They look gorgeous. I mean, they're so, just beautiful. Yeah. And anybody who wants to clown on me for having my army painted, I don't care. I'm going to have a painted army to play with. I don't care either. I mean, so, it's, I mean, however you do it, yeah. do it. So, Whatever makes sense for you. I'll, I'll be getting some painting in here and there. I just, I wanted to get an army up and running that I could play with that's painted yeah. for events and stuff. Even here, just locally at the store. It's just nicer to have an army like that. Yeah. So I've never understood people that throw shade because you had your army painted. Yeah. Now, I mean, I understand if you enter in competitions and don't credit the original artist. Oh, yeah. That's, those that's people. crap. But I mean, just because you had your, what if that's something you don't want to do? I mean, I know people that don't have the hand control. You know, they have limited Alzheimer's or uh, what's that? No, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and they they can't hold a brush, but they still want to play the game. Yeah. So you can tell them they can't because they can't paint. No, shut up, go away, stop with the paint shaming. <laughs> no, right. You can give me the fat shaming. I, I'm all over that because I got that going on. So new stuff. Wow. Yeah. So. Well, okay. How do we want to approach this? Because it is a great big plastic tidal wave. 
Let's do what dropped this week. Talk okay. a little bit about the 40K stuff. Okay. Then we'll go into the Adepticon preview or, you know, the yeah. preview show. And then we can do Corn Bloodbound. Sound good? Yep. Okay. So what released this week is Abaddon the Despoiler, Chaos Space Marines, Vigilus Ablaze, which is the next portion. And this is all 40K stuff, by the way. Yeah. Chaos Space Marines. Yeah. And the new codex. Over the top. Yeah. And before we get too deep into it, one of the things I want to throw a huge shout out, and it's to GW. So, yeah, you can yell at me for being a fanboy again. But one of the press things they put out was if you have the digital version of the Chaos Space Marine Codex, they are going to update it, I think today, I think it happened this morning, to the new version free of charge. It's just going to come out as an update, so you don't have to buy it again. Nice. Hopefully this is the first step, and then doing that to all of their updated codexes. Well, at least, you know, the one that comes to mind for me is the new Stormcast book yeah. that is surely coming out. Sure. In the next probably six to nine months. Mm -hmm. You know, what? there's been five Stormcast books. Well, there's been three corn, so I think there's four Stormcast. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. It would be nice if Stormcast players, yeah. if they have the digital copy, if they could just download the new updates. Yeah, just get an update to the new one. Yeah. Update the Azir app, you know. I mean, yeah, I'm sure they're going to lose money in sales over time, but I think what you gain back in in people's acceptance and happiness with you will probably make up for that. Because, you know, most people are going to be like, well, if I don't have to buy a $40 codex, I can spend that money on another box of Chaos Space Marines. So I just, I think that was one heck of a great thing for them to do. They also came out with that Noctilith crown, yeah. which if you've ever seen the movie Stargate or the TV show Stargate, it's just a Stargate. <laughs> yeah, but it's, a, it's, it's a corrupted Stargate. <laughs> yeah, without the iris. So, yeah. but yeah, I mean, I actually ended up picking up two of those, one for 40K and one that is so going to be an ALS portal. Nice. Because I mean, that thing is just, it's perfect. To me, it's what the Baleful Realm Gates should have been. Oh, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So... Curious, do you think that 40K will be getting the AOS treatment of every army gets a terrain piece? They're going down that road already. I mean, the the Death Guard got the Feculent and Armoire, same as the AOS did. They get their free trees. The Eldari got the web gate. Now, you know, the CSM got that. Yeah. So I have to believe. And it's something, you know, one of the streams, it was either one of the podcasts or one of the streams, they were talking about how they kind of want to commit to some sort of terrain feature for every force that comes out. I am totally down with that. I am. Because it means we'll get something that's not just ruined Imperial terrain for 40 Right. So. But you know, Alex and Dave, well, Alex had an interesting thing on Garage Hammer where he was kind of not super enthused about the terrain. And I could see his point because in some cases, these terrain pieces are so big that they're actually affecting board control. Like yeah. the Ideneth Deepkin ship, which you split into two parts, you can yep. have as one big, or you can double your fun and have it split into two and, yeah. you know, hose your buddy twice. So Same thing with the um, Loon Shrine. Yeah, the Loon Shrine is big. huge. Yeah. So, and I mean, I, I had never really thought about it until <laughs> Alex brought up that point. And yeah, I, I can see where that could become, you know, if I'm playing my BCR and I can't go somewhere because you put your stupid piece of terrain in my way, it's just going back to the Sylvaneth Wildwood thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I could see it from both sides. Uh, I still like it because it gives that much more character to an army, but it can also be kind of weird, you know, how do you explain this big piece of terrain that doesn't look anything else? else like yeah. what's on the table right so i don't, I don't know um well you know like the demon of, demons of corn they talk about you know the night before the battle they're actually summoning up that altar they're they're building it they're piling up the bones and what have you yeah so i mean it but I how are you going to explain and we'll we'll dig into this more with that new fire slayer 
thing. <laughs> I carry um, around this gigantic forge. Yeah, well, um, just you know, it's it's like a pocket forge. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> nice. I mean, yeah. I'm sure they'll have something in there that explains how they managed to mm-hmm. get that that thing around, which looks fantastic, by the oh way. But my still, God. Uh, yeah, I'm, I love it. Mm-hmm. You know, and it really is just part of me is like, well, what are Iron Jaws going to get? I know, really. You know, what kind of yeah. freaking weirded out shrine are they going to get? So, I don't know. It, it's it's pretty cool. Yeah. I, I, I personally like it. I understand Alex's point, you know, where it could get to a a point where it gets over the top. Both players putting something tremendous out on the board. Well, I think as long as they don't get past a certain size. Yeah. You know, nothing bigger than a loon shrine or the, right. or the ships. They might have learned what the, the boats are pretty extreme yeah. for the deep kin. I mean, the loon shrine's big, but it's not... I don't think it's too unwieldy. No. Uh, you know, and then you look at like the, um, what is the Bray Herd has the, um, that, um, that all, uh, Herdstone. Hearthstone. Uh, Herdstone. Yeah. And I thought that was a lot bigger than it actually is. It's really not that big. No, it's of not a, big. Of a, of a kit. So, you know, I don't think, and I don't think that Fire Slayer one will be too, too crazy. And then, uh, we didn't really see the Slanesh one very well, did we? In the preview? In the you see it in the movie and wow, is it cool. Yeah. But I don't think it's I don't think it's any bigger than the Loon Shrine. Okay. In fact, I think it's more along the well, I don't want I don't want to conjecture. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and we'll talk more about it here mm-hmm. shortly. So Yeah. So I think that was it that dropped this week. Yeah, just a, a whole horde of CSM, CSM goodies. goodies and the Vigilus yeah. Ablaze, which is the number two campaign book in that series. But rest assured, the Imperium is doing just fine on yep. Vigilus. We're winning, winning, winning. Truth. Yep. We built a wall, and we're keeping those chaos hordes out. Because we're going to defund our funding to... Yeah, okay, sorry. Stop, all stop, right, stop. all <laughs> right. Settle down. Settle down, boy. <laughs> so, I guess now we uh, we launch into what happened at Adepticon. Yeah. I called some of it. I was a little off on. I thought it would be a little more conservative than it was. Right. They actually announced quite a bit. But the one thing that I was spot on with was uh, Slanesh. Yeah. And part of that was a new greater demon Mm -hmm. of Slanesh. And that Keeper of Secrets is unreal. Really? You think it's that good? Okay. I'm kidding. (laughs) I was going to. Yeah. Oh, man. I remember. Looking at it on the the community page, and I literally said, "Wow!" Like yeah, it's, five times, it's, it blew me away. Mm-hmm. You know, and their models lately have, well, geez, for years now, they really haven't had a dud. I don't think. No, I mean, there's been some stuff that didn't quite scratch my itch, but it's still fantastic models. Right. This. Oh man, this model is just over the top. Good. Well, and you know that that one that model really didn't hit me. I mean, it, it's it's beautiful, it's gorgeous, and even that night we were just like holy hand grenades. But until I saw that size comparison of it next to the greater greater oh, yeah, one yeah, yeah. and all the other you know the other four things the other of its ilk, demons, yeah. I'm like this thing is huge. I mean, this thing is going to dominate a section of Absolutely. a table, and you're gonna. Wow. Well, it's right up there with the with the chicken. Yeah, I'd say. Oh, yeah. You know, it's taller than um, the great unclean one. It's not quite as tall as the bloodthirster because right. you know he's up in the he's air with his wings yeah. and stuff. But yeah, he's. I think it's a little bulkier mm-hmm. than that bloodthirster. Yeah, he sure is. He's got. He did leg day, arm day, well, all four arm days. Yeah, and he certainly did his abs. Wow. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's um, damn. You know, and and then not only is it such a fantastic sculpt, but the paint job on it, I think just everything about that model hits. And, you know, of all the things lately that have not been great big hits, I think it's been the paint jobs that have thrown us off. Like a lot of the Forge World stuff has looked, yeah, whatever, Mm -hmm. because they just haven't been great paint jobs. But this Slanesh stuff is, oh, my God. Yeah. So... Yeah, and I mean the the terrain piece that they have shown here that that thing that's held up by the two snake things with the 
Yeah, everything about the release uh, that that just sucks the air out of the room. Mm-hmm. But everything else they showed looks unreal, yeah. fantastic. You know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just the even their endless spells. I mean, of course, one of them is going to be. Well, the, all three of them are just amazing. The face with the tongue lashes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's not going to take some explaining when some mom walks into the game <laughs> table. And, oh, honey, let's go look at these games. They're yeah. playing with their little miniatures. Isn't that game? <laughs> oh, my God. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> right. So, yeah, that's going to take a little explaining. But, again, I think we were talking about this that night. All these new Slanesh models... They don't do anything to detract from our thoughts of what, you know, they even call them the hedonites of Slanesh. Yeah. So hedonism is a big thing here. But none of them are over the top sexualized. Right. And yet all of them are over the top models, period. Yeah. So yeah. it's just, I think it's a great release. Oh, my gosh. And, of course, the book. Yeah. Hedonites of Slanesh, coming soon to a game store near you. Yep. Did they say when, though? No, I don't yeah. believe so. Now, there's also rumors or whatever that they said at Adepticon that this that's not all the that's models. That's not all the new models. So there's apparently some more stuff. You know, they I've heard that before. They said that with the KO. Yeah. We didn't get anything right. else. Or sometimes they'll say, oh, there's more stuff coming, and it's like one more model Mm -hmm. so we'll see the one thing i'm surprised is there's no mortal style faction there's no like bloodbound there's no um arcanites type release for them so maybe that'll be the other models we get i hope so or i wonder if they're tying that into the story you know uh, my thought was and i was trying to find a way to express it the other night how many mortals have lived long enough to remember Slanesh? Because he's been put up since a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's only the demons and the very stalwart mortals that remember him as a god. You know, I'm I'm wondering if they're trying to get away from the mortal portion of the army and focus it more on the demon side of it, simply because... In the new mortal realms, in the age of Sigmar time frame, how many mortals would be around that remembered Slanesh as a god, as a force of the universe? It's a good question. And I'm sure we'll get a lot of that information in the book. Oh, yeah. That'll be really interesting because there's a lot of unknown about Slanesh. Mm -hmm. And I I know, you know, Ryan was talking about he would do Slanesh if there was more mortal, because he likes that mortal aspect. He likes the mortal types of chaos lists. But I don't don't know if they're going to have that just because how many mortals remember Slanesh. Or just how much of Slanesh's power is prevalent in the mortal realms. Yeah. He's probably got to do a little bit of growing. Yeah. I mean, he's been, he feasted on a lot of souls. But a lot of those have been taken away from him. A lot, yeah. Trixie elves. Those little tricksters. But yeah, I mean, and, you know, maybe he's got to grow up. Maybe he's got to start with just his demon hosts for a while. And, you know, I'm sure there's going to be cults here and there. Yeah. Obviously, you know, he's still a god. Or she's still a god. But, I don't know. We'll see. It'll all be answered soon. I'm, I'm really looking forward to the book. I have no interest in playing them. But, unless they're good. Because I'm a meditator. Um, <laughs> I am um, <laughs> kidding. I this is so weird. I actually have a desire to play Slanesh, which is crazy because I hate Slanesh. Really? Yeah, is my least favorite Chaos God. I cannot stand the Emperor's children or Fulgrim. They're my <laughs> least favorite Legion. He's my least favorite Primarch. <laughs> uh, it's just, but there is something about the way those models look. Yeah, it, it's this is a. If you're on the fence at all about them, I think this one's going to push you right yeah. over the top. Cause and it's also like the style of play. It's such a fast oh, army. Oh, my God, yeah. It looks like it'd be fun. After playing, you know, because I, I remember you know, back when Iron Jaws used to be that quick, mm-hmm. it was a lot of fun to kind mm-hmm. of spring that on your opponent. And these guys are even faster than yeah. that. Oh, yeah. And I'm used to playing like dwarves and just really slow armies. I'm building trolls now and yeah. whatnot. So it'd be, it'd be interesting. It'd be nice to have a maneuverable army. Yeah, something that's just that insanely fast. Yep. 
So yeah, I've knows? never really played a fast army. It's either been yeah, you know, it's one of the reasons that I kind of wanted to go with uh, Seraphon was to have some maneuvering, you know, things that fly. Yeah, but I settled on Nurgle because Nurgle well, gets pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say Nurgle. <laughs> Nurgle encompasses pretty much all the different chaos. Yeah. Things. Well, what's nice about Nurgle is is you can be fast when you want to. You yeah. don't have to. Yeah. You're not always going to be that way. Sometimes you can concentrate on beating people up. So, yeah, the Slanesh release, over the top. I think that whole new Realm of Chaos thing that they're doing is really, really cool. Definitely. So, yeah, super cool release. Then in the not-so-AOS department, they uh, they announced the new community survey, which they wanted to stress highly, and I think we can't stress highly enough, if you want to see GW doing something, take part in the survey. Yeah. So it's going to start on the 15th of April, so tax day. I don't know if there's a sign there or anything. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they're looking for feedback, and they're looking for you know how they're doing and, and what to do next. And, and the beauty of it is one person that answers the survey is going to win a Sisters of Battle army. So, yeah, yeah, I'll bet you there's going to be a lot of people answering the survey this time. Yep. Because a prize like that, yeah. Tasty. Just tasty. So, continuing on with the a the non-AOS stuff, um, they announced some event-exclusive models, which are, you know, pretty cool, but they're, they're all centered on 40K. The big announcement, I think, was 40K Apocalypse yeah. is getting a a redo and some of the best games in my life 40k have been apocalypse games yep when you get the right people yeah and you have the time in the space so i was gonna say some of the worst games of oh, 40k i've ever played are apocalypse too. by far <laughs> you know so, that game only that version of the game only operates in extremes yes yeah it's it's true if you have somebody good organizing it it's so much fun it hurts yeah if it's not well organized, it is a grind no. and you just want to poke your eyes out. Yep, yep, yep. So here's to Armageddon or Apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I know I made that comment that night. Hell, just the box looks cool. I want it just Yeah, to and it's a, it's a box. Yeah. It's Which makes me really wonder box. what's in that bad boy. I don't know. What's in the box? Yeah. No, sorry. <laughs> Gotta get it. I love it. And then, of course... They have a new faction for Warhammer Nightball. Yeah. Kind of ties into what we're talking about today. Putting Carriage on Overlords yep. into Warhammer Underworlds. Yep. And those are some fantastic looking models. Beautiful models. I'm sure they're going to see service in some KO armies. Oh, yeah. But just as a matter of course, thinking about it, KO is going to be really strong in Underworld. Yep. They're going to be ranged. I mean, you can just see the harpoon guns, and every single one of them is carrying some sort of big gun. Yeah. And that, so, well, they even mentioned it in the article about how they, they're they going to be so strong because they can hold objectives and kill yeah. from a range. Yeah. So. I have to believe that their weak point is going to be if you get to them, they're probably going to fall like. Well, yeah. They don't. <clears throat> if they're anything like they are in Age of Sigmar, they really don't have any armor. Yeah. The the Thunderer guy has a little bit, but mm -hmm. other than that, and then the Chemist. Looks yeah. like they have a Chemist with them. Yeah. So they're very, very cool. I mean. Hey, and it's a new unit for the Corridor and Overlords right. in Age of Sigmar. So and that, that can can't only be bad. help. So. Maybe they'll make them battle line. Probably <laughs> <laughs> not. <laughs> I can't go there. No. So. Don't worry, they'll nerf them. Two months after they release the sorry. <laughs> keep the gotta keep the salt levels to a minimum. <laughs> Moving on. All Moving of the cards are gonna get banned. <laughs> oh, not banned, they'll just be irrelevant. Yeah. <laughs> we made some changes to the cards. Oh Please erase everything God. on the front of the card. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh kidding. Come on, GW. We know you'll we know you know we love you. Too soon. Too soon. Hashtag too soon. So now we can start getting into some AOS stuff that isn't Slanesh. Yeah. And uh, you want to do Fire Slayers? Yeah. Okay. So. Wowza? Yeah, this is awesome. 
not only are they getting a terrain piece mm-hmm. like everyone else, they're getting endless spells, which yes. they call fiery equivalents to endless spells summoned to battle by room masters and smiters. I forgot what they're called now. Magmic innovations. In- invocations. Invocations. That's what I said. Yeah. Did I say something different? You said innovations. Or- innovations. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what a dark. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, so they're getting uh, their own endless spells. Yeah. And they're getting a new book. Mm-hmm. And in that new book, there will be rules for lodges. Yes. Um, there's going to be, obviously, new formations and stuff mm-hmm. like that. No new units, unfortunately. Right. But at least they're likely going to be brought up in power level and balance and everything yeah. to everybody Hopefully. else. Yeah. Which is fantastic news, even if you're not a Fire Slayers fan. Because it means, you know, if you play something like Seraphon or yeah. Bone Splitters or Iron yeah. Jaws or whatever, Beast Claw Raiders, mm-hmm. remember Games Workshop, they're an army. Uh, it means that there's light at yeah. the end of the tunnel. Oh, yeah. You know. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sure there is for all of these associated, you know, I'm sure one day the Seraphon won't be an afterthought and the Beast Claw Raiders will quit. I mean, they'll either... Tomb Kingdom, or no, bring I, them up. I think they'll roll them in with all ogres, <laughs> yeah, and just be the way they should have been in the first place. Yeah. And put all the ogres or something yeah. into one, and that's what we're all hoping. Put all yeah. the ogres and iron jaws and bone splitters. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Just, just you know, two or three destruction books to tie everything together. Yep. And I saw this great thing Wednesday night. I mean, almost as the reveal show was happening, and they released, they they showed a picture of that salamander that the fire slayers are getting. Yeah. And in the, uh, in the, uh, Seraphon Facebook group, there was a meme, there was a, a picture on there going, Oh my God, you know, how sad is it that the fire slayers get a, a new basilisk before Seraphon <laughs> does? <laughs> and I was just like, Oh, uh, that one hurts to the soul. But zing. yeah, you're right, man. How zing. sad is that? So, well, but yeah, that mag, that salamander that the fire slayers are getting. Wow, does that thing look cool? Yeah. And sheesh. And even that forge, that, that I th- guess the forge is their terrain piece. Yep. That yep. thing is, it's over the top. It looks, is just it looks good. Looks good. So, dwarf players, there is, there is truly light coming at the end of the tunnel real quick. Yep. So. Because these, they tend to resolve these announcements in a, in a reasonably decent time. So I'd say definitely within six months, probably within four. I'd say within we'll two. see Slanesh and Fire Slayers. Yeah. So and that, yeah, I mean, that gives hope to everybody else. Because I mean, obviously they can't fix every book right now. Right. And I'd rather they take their time with Beast Claw and everything else and make them right. Yeah. Then just rush them out the door. Did you see that tweet where dude called us out and said, uh, yeah, episode uh, 64 didn't age too well because it's, you know, like Wednesday night after listening to it, here's all these changes. And, you know, yeah, oh, we did. We, we called the Keeper of Secrets wrong and we called, uh, yeah, well, we called Warcry wrong, but at the time we didn't know it. They said, and I stand by what we said, kind of, because War Cry has been announced. Okay. They gave more details. Yeah. And they said, you know, the factions that are coming out with it are chaos. And there's also going to be nine non-chaos forces at release. So what I assume that means is they're going to have rules, but it's going to use models from the existing ranges. Yeah. You know. That's and that's fine. That's, I mean, that's, I'm not I'm not – beefing with that at all i'm just saying that we didn't know that and it kind of speaks to our point is it's being released for chaos right now and then everybody else gets to play of course right but they also did say there is a ton more coming out for war cry yeah so, definitely definitely yeah and, and they that, showed eight of the nine factions mm-hmm. they, you know, they gave icons for them so yes give you an idea what's coming out and the I don't know the the one chaos faction with the funky helmets. I don't know what they are, but they are weird. I thought it was Dreadspear, the Dreadspear. Uh, Darkling Coven or whatever. Really? Yeah, which I, doesn't really make a lot of sense, but that's what it 
struck hmm. me as. And then somebody said Daughters of Cain or I didn't have Deep Kin. I don't know. I don't know. Those aren't Gollum looking things. They're just. Oh, yeah. Fantastic looking. Yeah. They're just crazy cool looking. And then, of course, you know, they say that it, uh, Warcry will also let you explore the terrifying fauna of chaos, just as griffhounds and ether wings, blah, blah, blah. Then they talk about, they showed pictures of two new Monsters. chaos critters. Yeah. And I'm telling you what, oh my God. God they look good, man. I'm like, these. <laughs> they look good. First of all, both of them look like they're begging to be converted. Yeah. And if you guys want to follow along with what we're talking about, just, you know, this is all on the Warhammer community page. So we're not yeah. making this stuff up. I mean, yeah, these, those models are, I mean, I'm looking at that one guy flying. The harpy. Yeah. And just going, okay, that's, that's every demon prince I've ever wanted to see. Cause I mean, I like the demon prince model. I think yeah. I have one. I think it's a bit small. It's but, probably about the same size as Valkia. Mm-hmm. You think this one is yes. Valkia size? Oh, it's a harpy. Harpies have, you know, always mm, been I, I think it's, I hope it's bigger than that. But, but then again, you're right. That is a small size base. Yeah. Eh, bummer. Oh, well. But still, they're they're just gorgeous. Both of them are gorgeous. And I mean, Warcry overall looks like it's going to be. I think it'll be a hit. Yeah. I mean, if it's even remotely like Kill Team and has the same sort of mechanics and yeah. what have you, it's going to be fun and it's going to be cool. And the, the idea of the boxes coming out with, you know, different terrain pieces if they're doing it like they do Kill Team, you're going to see so much more terrain coming out and, and showing up on tables. Mm, it's yep. awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Then what else was, the, what was another release thing? Was there anything else? Well, there was the 50 Shelves of Grey. Oh, God. Which that has did... got to be my new favorite GW video. It's... Did you see that on the community site or the Facebook page? How come, why wasn't Mr. Gray Duncan Rose? Oh, yeah, yeah, And yeah. Nick came back with, well, you know, the universe would have split asunder if Duncan Rhodes was in a suit. Yeah. <laughs> and Slanesh would have popped forth. Yeah, it would have oh, been the second rebirth of yeah. Slanesh. I was just like, holy God, that was awesome. But yeah, well, let's let's speculate. I mean, because I think everyone in the world has decided that it's going to be an airbrush. Yeah. So just just from the description, or it'll be a Games Workshop official painting studio that you can get to paint your <laughs> your stuff for you. A commission service. Like, yeah, a commission service. Yeah, official Games Workshop painting service. Couldn't wouldn't that be just crazy? Yeah. Have the heavy metal team paint your models for you. Sure. For Just, only 3,000 <laughs> right? pounds. Yeah. $4,000. You pay shipping. <laughs> we'll paint. Yeah. Tired of Brandon Palmer being backed up and can't get your stuff painted <laughs> yes. to that ridiculous quality? Just send them straight send to the them source. Send them straight to heavy metal. Yep. Yeah. I mean, there are some people that are saying that they're going to... One of the things I saw was they're going to start releasing sprues in colored plastic. So that they'll be ready right from Yeah, there. that sounds... Not. Really? You don't like... You don't think that? No. I, that's not even close to what this is. Really? No. First huh. of all, why? Okay. I mean... Uh, because I think it's done really well for under under worlds. Underworlds. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there again, the whole figure was one color. You know, like all of the rats were brown. Sure. So what this guy was talking about was, you know, different sprues with different colors. So when you put it together, it looks painted. Oh, no. no. That's bananas. That's no, 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 no. Never going to happen. No, I think what is possible is like uh, the new corn. Everything's just red, red. plastic. Mm -hmm. The new Stormcast be gold plastic. Yeah. I, I don't think that's, I don't think that would be worthy of a reveal at Adepticon. Maybe, it's uh, got to be. Well, the only thing I'm thinking of is there's several very good European airbrush makers, which I don't think they would go through Harder and Steenbeck because those are very expensive. And once you throw the GW uh, logo tax on everything, those, that would probably be out of the range of most people. Okay. But Badger, which is made in the USA owns Thayer Chandler, which is a big 
airbrush maker in England. And if they're going to do a branded, say, like Patriot 105, which I'm sure they would call, you know, a Sigmar 105 or something, yeah. or, you know, I don't know, Emperor 105, <laughs> something. First of all, it's a very good airbrush. It's almost bulletproof. I think Ken and the Badger Company could keep up with the demand and provide decent sales and service, you know. If it's something like that, if it's a branded one, if it's something that they make up themselves, then I don't know. I See, don't that's know. the thing, though, is, is Games Workshop does everything they're on their own. It's not like they they use somebody else's paints. No. They make all their own paints. Yep. They make all their own brushes, all their own yeah. everything. So if it's an airbrush, I'm pretty sure. And they've done an airbrush before. <laughs> A, it was an airbrush. It, it was, was very an airbrush. basic, and it was it was useful for base coating. That's yes, it. and that but, was it. So you know, it doesn't yeah. mean that they couldn't do it again. I mean, and they could. You know, it's not that difficult to make an airbrush. You you know the the company that I think a lot of people start with the Master Airbrushes. I mean, they're not really that bad. They're not up at the Badger and Iwata quality, right. but they're. They're definitely passable. And if what you're looking at is base coating and, you know, priming and base coating, yeah, I mean, they could, they could do their own thing and that wouldn't be too bad. I would rather them go with a, an established company like Thayer Chandler, you know, Badger Thayer Chandler or something like that. But hey, if they do their own, it'll be worth a look. But the nice part about it is what it's going to open up is for the community team, you know, Duncan and Peachy and whoever else they bring in. They'll now be able to do shows on airbrush. Right. And I know that's something they're constantly getting hammered to show. How do I do this with an airbrush? Now, here's the thing, though, is they, I'm sure, invested a lot of time and energy into coming up with those colored primers. Yeah. Which make fantastic base coats. Yeah. So then why would you come out with an airbrush that really only just does the same? Well, it, when you think about it. Let's say you spray something chaos black. The first step they show you is always to cover it with Abaddon black, <laughs> Abaddon black, damn yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Um, just because if you need to touch it up later, they're not exact matches. And I know the same thing with Mephiston red is it's not an exact match to the paint pot Mephiston red. So these things aren't exact. And the other part is... Maybe at the same time, they're going to start putting out bigger jugs of the base paints with, you know, more or primer colors, a new range of primers that are appropriately colored so that they can, you know, sell you those too, which I certainly wouldn't mind if they come out right. with a good quality primer. Really, honestly, the GW primer paints are, are pretty darn good. I think we've all had problems with the Avaland Sunset. Oh, God. And the Chaos White. or Chaos White. Wow. <laughs> Chaos White. You uh, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, struck their bill. Yeah, just did. <laughs> Having a moment. But yeah, the Corax White right. is problematic. But really, when you get right down to it, I mean, I know there's a lot of people that just love to spend hours talking about how bad Corax White is and how bad GW Paints are. But show me a, a really good white primer and... I never had a problem with the white. Me either. Even the, when it had that frosty look, you yeah. just brush it off with a brush and it it's perfect. Yeah. The only time I ever, no, I, I, I did have one problem with the white and I cleaned it up, you know, with uh, isopropyl alcohol yeah. and a, and a Q-tip. Yeah. Uh, the, the bad one though was the Avalon Sun. So yeah. That one did me dirty. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, that one was, you must have had a weird. Yeah, can or, yeah. But then, you know, like I said, I didn't see it on the one can, but then on the next can, it was pretty spotty and it was coming out almost like it was uh, too thick. Yeah. So, like a powder. Yeah. Like the mix was off or something. Yeah. Something. So. Uh, yeah. I mean, and they, and they do have a whole range of air paints mm -hmm. already yep. with no airbrush. With no airbrush to go, go in. Them. So it's. So they know it's a market and, I, you yeah. know, they're always, every time they do a hangout and paint. People are like, when are you going to do airbrush? Right. And do you do anything with an airbrush? And, you know, I know they say that they don't, but honestly, some of that heavy metal stuff that I've seen, I'm pretty sure some of that was done. I'm not 
in any way, shape, or form knocking those guys. And I don't mean to sound like I am, but I think some of that stuff, some of those blends and some of those layerings, I mean, just the easy stuff before they get to the super detailed brush work. I think some of that was laid on with an airbrush. I think if you look at it from a marketing perspective, right, and and you take a look at that video, the video shows what a lot of people have, which is whole armies that they built, but they haven't even base coated. It's just the, it's just the, the plastic. And yeah, you could say, well, grab a can of Macrog blue or, or Mm -hmm. uh, Mephiston red and and hit them with that and and go from there. But I think they realize like, well, there's a market there for people who want to get past this first step Mm -hmm. very easily and very quickly. And if we provide a, you know, an airbrush, yeah. And just some quick tips on how to use it. Uh, you know, I think it's totally doable. How many people do you know build an army and then they just hit it with the black yeah. primer and then it never progresses? It never I, I was guilty of that for a long time back when I first started in 40K. Yeah. My black Templars were just black yeah. Templars. They were truly <laughs> black Templars. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, and I, I think they see that the market is probably big enough now to justify the expense of bringing out that product. Yeah. And we could be wrong, too. It might not even be an airbrush. It could be something else. It could be, I don't know, a new brush. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, it could but be a whole I'm new line of brushes. I'm pretty sure it's... It could be an official Games Workshop painting service. I'm just saying. It, it could be. It could be. <laughs> so, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I mean, there's a lot of people that are reasonably sure it's an airbrush. But then again, we've all been reasonably sure about stuff before and been totally wrong. So... Yeah. Who knows? I look forward to everything. And then, of course, moving on from the painting part, we had Forbidden Power come out. Oh, yeah. Or the announcement of Forbidden Power. <laughs> and we were mostly wrong, but well, somewhat right. When we corrected ourselves, when we went back and read it and yeah. saw that it, you know, it was a supplement yeah. for everything, that's when we kind mm-hmm. of like, oh, okay, well. Yeah. This is what it'll be. So it it says Forbidden Power contains new endless spells usable by any army representing the dark magics of Shyish. That's us. The death people in Soul Wars. Yeah. And just the ones they've shown. Oh my god, they're Yeah, they look fantastic looking kids. Yeah. That that astrolabe the or the table compass looking thing is yeah. just I want like four of those. The skeleton bridge. The, yeah, because looks fantastic. At first, I didn't see how that was, and then when you look at the movie, they have two of them facing each other. I wonder if that's like almost like a baleful rem gate, where oh, you yeah. can go up one and then down the other across the other side of the board. I don't know. Wouldn't that be cool? But yeah, and then you have the the Nagash head coming out of the ground. I'm like, oh, we haven't seen that in the Mummy before. But I mean, oh yeah, that's yeah, it's still oh my god, so cool. They all look really, really yeah. cool. And I'm interested to see what the... And it says, every army will get a chance to harness the power of the realm of death. Because I guess it's leaking. I mean, Nagash really blundered. Yeah, they kind of mentioned that. And I forget where else I saw that. Uh, oh, it was in the um, the Slanesh reveal of like just how badly mm-hmm. Nagash effed up yeah. all the realms yeah. with his stupidity. Yeah. Useless. Once again. Moron. Yeah. Worst God ever. ever. But yeah, that that pretty much ties up the Adepticon releases. And honestly, when you look at it, the bulk of it is AOS with only Armageddon coming out for 40K. And of course, you know, the Sisters of Battle thing, if you do the community survey, but it it was a almost... Completely the, focused on AOS. That was my biggest miss. I really thought they would announce Adeptus Sororitas. I, I thought we might get a release date too, but or some more some pictures of actual kits, right? Something. So what I'm guessing is this release for Sisters of Battle is going to be so big <laughs> that they're not going to let it share space with anything else. No, they will focus solely on how big this release is. It will probably be the summer of Sisters of Battle. Yeah. You know, or it will fall. probably start like in June and last through August. Yeah. You know, three months of, they're here. Something. And I, I just, there's a little part of me that wonders, 
They're being so forward and open, and they've been having so much jokey fun with Sisters of Battle. I wonder if they're going to release a new faction alongside them for them to, you know, square off against. Not that they don't have enough enemies in the universe as it is right now, and right. they don't have to. But I wonder if they're going to sneak something else in there. You know, if there's something else up their sleeve. Yeah. So uh, it just it makes me wonder. Good times. We are certainly living in a golden age of, oh, my God, this is cool. Yep. I was sitting there last night, and I was clicking over onto the New Zealand GW store page so I could see what was coming out. Right. And when I saw that the releases were only like Havocs for 40K and – the new white dwarf and and just it was some 40k models i actually was like ah oh, phew i don't have to like rush to pre-order and i don't have to i'm sitting there thinking i'm actually relieved that there's nothing coming out that i feel <laughs> oh, wow. obliged to you yeah. know be up at 10:55 so i can be on the website to order it or at the store yeah. and i was like holy that's oh, weird speaking of which uh, cause last time we talked about the, the solar wars book that they oh. kind of effed up yeah. big time on the release of mm -hmm. that. They acknowledged that and they said that, that going forward, the books will only be available on the GW site right. where you can only get one per order. Yes. Doesn't mean you can't stack up 10 of them again. Right. It means you have to make 10 separate, ten separate orders, orders and, and all of that stuff. Yeah, so. they, I, and we we acknowledge right there they were going to fix this. Yeah, this was a one time boo boo, and you know. And didn't they say they were going to re? They're going to redo, or they're going to make another run? I thought. I think they did. Yeah, not going to be numbered or anything like that. Like Ryan was like, "Well, if they do that, then mine's worthless." No, right, it's really yeah. not. But you know, because there's other people. I mean, I feel bad for the people that shelled out the 500 bucks or the 400 pounds on eBay right afterwards. Well, so I mean, I really know. do feel for them, but that was just, you know, it was a boo-boo, an oops. Yep. But, you know, of course, it gives all the haters. Yeah, see what they did? They just generated, Whatever. you know, all this all this desire for that one by... Those chuckle nuts are always going to find something exactly. to complain about. So. so now in the book department, I have to say... Huge news. Uh, Forge World put up the pre-order for oh, book yeah. eight, Malevolence. All kinds of blood angel uh, goodness. White scars and blood angels, baby. Yeah. Uh, I am. So I was like, click, click, click. Take my money. Take my money. Now. <laughs> now. Take it now. Yeah. So, yeah, that one. It's been a long time coming. And, and I understand there's no, when when your lead guy passes away like that, it, yeah. it definitely puts a rocket on your whole world. And uh, so I'm looking forward to this book. Really looking forward to it. Yeah. So I guarantee it's going to be dedicated to Ellen Bly. So in other book news, uh, Scourge of Fate came out today, which was one week too late for our coverage of Archeon, because here's a book all about Archeon, and we didn't have it for last week. <laughs> last well, show. Yeah. I'm sorry, last two weeks ago, but last show, so... Yeah, we'll get to read more about what Archeon's been up to and how it's uh, – Andrews was telling me that it's kind of the story of Archeon through one of the Varen Guard's eyes of, you know, what they're doing and what he's doing during all of this uh, stuff with nice. Necroquake and what have you. So we'll probably get a lot of answers to what Abaddon's up to – or Abaddon, Archeon's up to. Also, the horror stories – Oh, hit yeah. The yeah. Perdition's Flame, Maledictions, all that stuff hit out today. So I picked those up for my wife because she's she loves horror. And I'm like, I might as well have her listen to the audio drama first and read the book first, and she'll tell me whether or not she likes them. Cool. Well, I you know, I always try to keep an eye out for video games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there is a new mobile game coming out called Warhammer Chaos and Conquest. Yes. This is it's set in the old world, and it, this looks like a empire building style, kind of like, um, oh geez, everybody has, you know, those yeah, empire building yeah, four X games games. Yeah. So uh, yeah, looks like a Warhammer version of mm -hmm. it, which I'm I'm kind of excited. I enjoy yeah. those games, you know. I do too. I just hate the microtransactions. Yeah, hopefully you'll avoid all that stuff. Yeah. So so. Um, also on the gaming news, Inquisitor Martyr, um, they announced a 
2.0, which is going to revamp 90% of the game. Really? Yeah. Man, yeah. I should have picked that game up when it was on sale. Mm-hmm. Actually, you know, I, I play a lot of it, and I find it to be a lot of fun. But all the things they announced they're going to change are things that I would have changed if I could, you know, wave a magic wand. The the scaling thing, the power level is going to go away in, in favor of just straight levels. Because right now you you level up in the game. You go through different levels, which unlocks all your perk points and all that stuff. But at the same time, you also have this power level thing, which is governed by the gear that you're wearing. Okay. And you get, like, if you wear all Mars pattern gear, you get a bonus. If you wear all Thule pattern gear, you get a bonus. But what the game forces you to do is if something that you find has a much higher power level, you're going to equip that and screw up your bonuses Uh because the power level unlocks your ability to do things in the game. Oh, that sucks. And so, yeah, it's a very horrid mechanic. They said they're just going to get rid of that and and go to pure leveling, which is good. I mean that that's yeah. that's a, a big plus. And then you know there's a couple of niggling things that are weird with the game that they're going to fix and animation delay here and there. So they're going to try to level that all out. Nice. So all the changes they announced were going to be were all really good things. And, and look, I'm not trying to make it sound like it's not playable right now. It's perfectly playable. And it's, you know, bonuses are nice, but you don't have to have them to win. You actually have to think about what you're doing. So. Cool. Yeah. It's one of those very few action role-playing games that I can get into because I generally don't like them. I I feel like they're finger twiddlers. Oh, yeah, yeah. But this one actually has a really good storyline. You can put a lot of thought into it and and win. So on a community note, just want to put a little PSA out there. The individual... That won the Las Vegas Open, Bill Souza. Um, I don't know if you guys all know him or anything, but he's a really good guy, a really good player. Obviously, he won LVO with Flesh Eater Courts from before they had all their new book. Right. Um, but he's really a he's really a nice guy. He just had an incident. Uh, his his mom just passed away, and there is a Indiegogo has been set up to help defray the costs of the funeral and all that other stuff. And I know I myself, I've just gone through that four times. Um, funeral expenses can get out of hand really, really fast. So um, if you have a mind to it, you can jump on Facebook and uh, look up Bill Souza, S-O-U-Z-A. And um, the post is on there where he links you to the uh, to the Indiegogo campaign. And I'll, uh, I'll probably put a link up to it also in the show notes. So if you want to give something to help out one of our own, yeah, it'd be great. Not asking you to, but if you feel like you should, please feel free. All right, so let's talk Blades of Corn. Yep. Wow. What a good book this is. Yeah. Pretty tasty. Yeah. It's they've uh they've seriously upped the power level, but I don't think they've gone over the top either. Right. Yeah, it's a good day to be a a, a corn player. Yeah. It sure is. Uh, I think, who was it, Zach was saying, or Levi, was saying today they did, they used Scar, Bloodwrath. No, Scarbrand. Scarbrand. Yeah, it was that. Why did I say that? Yeah, Scarbrand and did 30 points of damage on the first turn yeah. with him. I'm like, wow. Yep. That's, I mean, he's definitely capable of it. Yeah, the book's definitely got a nice increase. The Blood Tithe points have been... Their utility has been upped quite a bit. Yeah. At, but at the same point, at the same time, they have the same drawback that they had before. It's all or nothing. Right. But uh, one thing that I noticed is if you can use your blood tithe point in your hero phase to trigger the abilities. Mm-hmm. But when you summon units using blood tithe points, it's in the movement phase. Right. So if you blow your points in the in the hero phase to get an ability, and then you somehow manage to generate more points by the time your movement phase comes mm-hmm. along, you can then summon more units. Yeah. So. Yeah, it, it's a there's some there's some crazy good combos in here. Uh, yeah, we're not going to do a full blown review, codex yeah. review or you know, battle tome review. We leave that to Face Hammer and the people who are real smart, but. <laughs> I mean, just the 
you know, their whole thing is tied around the blood for the blood god. And so every unit that gets destroyed generates a blood tithe point. From there, you have not just the summoning, which is pretty nice. You can yep. summon up, you know, cheap blood letters. But if you build up to eight points, uh, yeah, you can get yourself a bloodthirster. So, hmm, who knew? Yep. But uh, also, there's abilities that you can... There's a actual blood tithe rewards table. When some of these are... You pop them and they last for the whole game. Yeah. So it's crazy. And like we were saying last week, this whole tome is all about shutting down magic. So they're endless spells, help with shutting down magic. They're just average existence helps to shut down magic. Just the crazy amount of, you know, the flesh hounds have their little deal. I mean, it's, it's, I think magic heavy armies are kind of shaking in their boots right now. Yeah, I mean, they still have things that can help them. You know, you can throw out cogs, give you mm-hmm. a little bonus, and some stuff like that. And some really magic-heavy armies, like, um, you know, I think some death armies will still be okay. Yeah. Using, like, Arcan and Nagash and yeah. whatnot. But there is some stuff in here. This is, like, unmodified cast rolls of eight. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if you get plus five to your casting yeah. roll. If you still roll an eight, you're in trouble. Yeah, things happen. So Bad things happen. <laughs> yeah. So, and the units, I think, got a well-needed rebalancing. Overall, I think a lot of them got a little better. Some of them got a lot better. Some of them had weird abilities taken away. I think if you look at it, you know, from a from a 10,000-foot view, I think a lot of the things that were taken away were things that sort of violated turn order and the natural flow of the game. Whereas they were, the abilities they put back in are things that are kind of more standard now. How things work, like you said, summoning is at the end of the movement phase, which is more in line with what everybody else is doing. Yeah. And, you know, it it just, everything got cleaned up. So it's really, wow. The Bloodthirsters, I think, got a big boost in power just because of the whole rule set not not necessarily their individual war scrolls got better but they got better as a whole because yeah. of the new set of rules so does anything jump out at you as being amazing no i haven't really had a chance to kind of dig through it unit by unit i mean some of the formations they added they added i think quite a few more and some of them are pretty nasty Oh yeah, and giving the boost to uh, skull crushers mm-hmm. is fine. Finally, monsters cav is starting to feel like monsters cav again. Yep. Uh, they didn't quite seem to have the punch they should have mm-hmm. for quite a while there, but now they're they definitely look to be a respectable unit. Yeah, I just I don't know. Every all around, everything just looks good. Yeah, really good. Uh, I think it looks like stuff got. A, a little more expensive. Oh, of course. You know. So. Yeah, I think with with everything getting a little bit better, the the prices did go up. Yeah. But I'm not sure by how much. I haven't sat here and yeah, and, poured and, over it, but you know. I gotta say thirty blood less thirty blood letters for three hundred points is mm-hmm. always gonna be good. Yes, it is. Yeah, just blood letters are good. The now well, they always were before, but yeah, being able to up their attacks, you can make them into a a nasty hitting unit. One of the things that was on the stream uh, goes back to your point about how uh, they they tried to make everything you know fold in uh, and and just you know play better. So yeah, one of the other one of the things I love to see is uh, Corgus Cole stayed in here. And he stayed with his reality splitting axe, and they they kind of didn't change that mechanic at all. Right. So he's kind of a, I think he's got some mileage. That that's a super ability. Yeah, and they changed his rules a little bit. I remember him. There was something about him in his last iteration that made him goofy. I, and I'm sure there's people out there yelling at the <laughs> their head or their earbuds what it is. I, I can't remember. He he just didn't fit in right, or he. He did something, but they, they streamlined him. And now I think he's he's fairly valuable. Yeah. So. And he brings that, uh, 
he brings that, like I said, that reality splitting axe. I love that thing. And a five up slain. Yeah. Well, the regular so, uh, Mighty Lord of Corn has it as well. Does it? Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh, yeah. Right there. Mighty Lord of Corn. Reality splitting axe. My bad. Yeah. I still, I, that thing is so cool. Yeah. It's, it's pretty nasty. But, but he could pile in eight inches. Yeah. <laughs> is eight inches. Crazy or what? Yeah. Korgaraths are good. <laughs> well, Korgaraths have always been good. I just yeah. wish they'd make them available outside of a start collecting box. You know, it's funny. I was talking to Anders about that, and he's like, you know, the problem is that that sprue is a combined sprue. It's oh, not the Korgarath right, yeah. on his own thing. So he's there with the other models. So, yeah, it's kind of sad, but their endless spells are, of course, I mean, we talked about that last time. Those things are super over the top. But again, they're not crazy because they can go away. And yeah, it makes sense. It it definitely makes sense. I think it all works together. I think it's going to be a really fun army to play. And when you have a good corn army to square off against, the game's better for it. Sure. You know, it's the same thing like we say in 40K. When the Space Marines aren't good, it's not a great game because a majority of the people that play the game either have or are focused on Space Marines of some flavor. Yeah. And, you know, right now they're pretty darn good and they're getting better with all the new releases. Yep. You know, but there's still some some chapters out there that are hurting. But, you know, all these little incremental new units are, are adding – to that and it's making up for it and and this update to corn is going to do the same thing it's going to make all those people that have corn armies because face it when you first got into the game you had two choices yep. stormcaster corn so <laughs> yeah there's a lot of people with at least the seeds of a corn or stormcast army so it's always better when those are good so not much else can be really said about the blades of corn book without i mean getting into a a review of the of the battle tome, which right. we're not going to do, but it's definitely it's gonna it's gonna catch a people some people off guard. And now my big question that I have is: Is this the first of the battle tomes that's going to bring back shooting? Hmm. I don't know. Did shooting ever really? Well, yeah, I guess. Shooting kind of disappeared for a while, yeah. you know, with uh, bone splitters kind of drifting away, mm -hmm. KO getting nerfed out of existence. Mm -hmm. Really, you know, when I think of a solid shooting army, I guess I think Stormcast. Stormcast. Yeah, they're the ones that shoot right now with the ballistas and the the Well, just the judicators. Prosecutors, judicators. Judicators just always been good. Yeah. So now. I don't, I don't know. Because, I mean, who would bring shooting back? If you're going to play a magic army, you're going to need to be able to reach out and get these guys because most of these corn units are either going to be screened by something that can fight like the devil. <laughs> See what I did there? Oh, that's two, isn't it? Damn it. Okay. Yeah. That's two. <laughs> <clears throat> but, I mean, they're going to be screened. So you're going to have to, even with, you know, even with the minus one. You're going to have to start taking pot shots at these heroes. You're going to have yeah. to start knocking down the slaughter priests. And, you know, it's. But, but again, who's going to bring it? You know, I mean, KO Sylvanath? aren't a thing. Well, yeah, Sylvanath, Zinch I suppose. With the, I mean, the. Yeah. They're still hurting and they're still, they have cost problems, but they still have shooting. I mean, they, they do. can still do, they do some. But I don't think that's enough to outweigh. You know, uh, the gloom, well, I don't know about gloom spite, but the daughters of Cain. Yeah. You know, and it's not like people are going to bring so much canary no. or whatever that they'll, you know, it'll be a shooting daughter's army. But you're going to have to think about that as an option. You're going to have to think about it when you're planning for all comers at a tournament. You're going to, I mean, you're going to have to have something that will reach out and touch. Yeah. It's kind of a choice between do you. Want to try to have some range stuff to, to pick them off early, 
Or do you want to try to go so combat heavy that you can just beat these guys back? Mm. You know, like if you're playing uh, Ida Nut Deepkin yeah. and you just time your charges right with your eels or yep. whatever to blow through the units of, you know, whatever the, the corn player is yeah. putting down so that you can get through. And yeah. But it's going to be hard because, uh, you know, in that Blood Tithe table, you can summon a lot of characters, a lot of the demon characters, yes. you know. So yeah. it's like, okay, you picked off my five wound character. I'll just spend three Blood Tithe points and bring him back. Yeah. Here he is. You know, and, so. and he's buffing everybody again. So, eesh, I don't know. It's it's crazy, you know. I It's kind of weird how at the end of AOS 1.0, shooting was king. I mean, it was yeah. what you did. And then AOS 2.0 comes out and it's like, it's all in your face maneuvering. Well, the armies have just gotten so fast. Yeah. So fast. You know, with Daughters of Cain, I didn't have Deepkin. Yeah. Slamash before. Yeah. Uh, the I mean, new book, it's going to be even worse. I imagine it's, what it's going to be now. You know, Nurgle is fast. Super fast uh, when they want to be. Some death armies can be bananas fast. Uh, you know, Flesh Eater Court coming mm-hmm. in from the sides and stuff. Yeah. And even in the armies that aren't that fast, you know, you think, like, you don't think speed with Fire Slayers, but when I can take two tunneling characters and bring in 60 Volkites in your back lines, yeah. I don't need to be that quick. Yeah. I'm, I'm already in your guts. I'm already there. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think that's that is the kind of aspect of the game overall that's going to have to change for yeah. for shooting to be as predominant as it was before. So I don't think one individual army is going to affect that. I think yeah. it's going to have to be a gradual shift I think or or a, a complete rules change. I think we'll see a, a shift over time. Yeah, a small one, but yeah, I I I, I just you know. I think you'd have to see a new army drop yeah. that has several viable shooting units in it in order to to get that mentality back in the player right. base. You know, maybe maybe Malarian's elves will mm-hmm. have like some shade style units that are really yeah. effective with shooting, or maybe Tyrion's light elves will have some kind of archer unit that fires blessed bolts through demons <laughs> and stuff. I, you know, better than Seraphon at demon hunting. Yeah. So, yeah, something yeah. like that. Well, look at a whole bunch of skinks with no, no, no. That's not you get, the, work. You get that out of here, Bill. Okay. <laughs> we'll have none of that. <laughs> get your dreams and get out. <laughs> Pack up your dreams, kid. Yep. Get out of here. Broken dreams. <laughs> That's so true. Literally but... unplayable dreams. No, they're <laughs> they're playable now. It's they need help. They need some. They just need an update. Yeah, the, the same kind of update that everybody else is getting. So yeah. I'm sure it's in the pipeline. Yep. So in that Bretonian slash Tomb King pipeline. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. That hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Don't crush my dreams. Yep. <laughs> they already did. No, I'm just kidding. No. But yeah, I, I, I got to say, I think this corn release is, well, you can tell I kind of went all in on it. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. I was, you, you finally, it, it was all the buildup. From the deep kin and the, yeah. the daughters, and you're yeah. not buying this new stuff, and then you're just the gloom spite. Yeah, and you're just like I can't, I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. I have to go yeah. all in on an army. All those builds. Well, I, I blame actually Anders over there at the Warhammer store because he talked me into that the escalation paint play build uh-huh. paint play. Did he Did thing he twist your arm? And then there? he told me I had to play corn. Did he? So, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, Anders said, is such a bully. Yeah, he is. He's really a bully. It's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> well, he said I could, I guess. Yeah. Which for me is, you will. You will. <laughs> You'll enjoy this as much as I tell you to. <laughs> I guess that's going to bring us around full circle to what's going on with the Dwarden. Yeah. I mean, really? What's going on? So, what we have so far... You know, dispossessed have been a thing since the beginning, but there really isn't anything on them. Right. And then, you know, the Ironweld Arsenal, which always bugs me that they took the artillery out of a dwarf army. Doesn't make any sense to me, but. Yeah. Okay. So does that mean that Dwarden will fold into free people or a dispossessed will f- fold in with free people I don't since know. some of their stuff is free? I don't know. I don't, know. yeah. Kind of goofy. confusing, to so, say the least. So I think we'll be better off just kind of ignoring those two yeah. factions because they're really just there to play pay lip service to the models. To the old models, yeah. So. I, do you think they'll go legacy? Or? Um, man, that's. 
I hope not, because some either, of those yeah. models are so good. So great. So I, I hope not, but I don't really know what you do with them, because some of them are really old. The old Warriors yeah. and Thunders and stuff, man, those are old kits. And that's the thing is you got to go by what's available. What right. do they have available? Because they're not going to support something that they can't put in the stores or on the yeah. website. Yeah. And a lot of that iron weld stuff and a lot a lot of the dispossessed stuff, it's not available. Yeah. So it might just get like get canned. Yeah. Yeah, because maybe that, that classic Tolkien-esque uh, old world dwarf just doesn't fit the Mortal Realms when you look at things like Fire Slayers and, Car- and Caradron Overlords. They've just gone in such wildly different directions well, with it, what they could do. Yeah, you know, like we said, when – when we were talking about doing this show, it, one of the things we brought up was GW has a problem with anything that they can't stamp their IP control onto. Yeah. And you can't do that with the old dwarves because they're Tolkien-esque dwarves and you can't copyright that. You can't defend that. Right. Whereas you can with all the, you know... There's nothing like the Caradron Overlords anywhere, and there's no yeah. Fire Slayers anywhere. Right. So I can see them maybe coming out with maybe something new, but I see those ones going by the wayside, which is sad. But yeah, it's you know it, it doesn't fit into the new high fantasy. They don't want dwarves anymore. They want dwarden. Yeah, and they they've kind of hinted at how in the Age of Chaos. The dwarves that stuck around on the ground that weren't fire slayers kind of got their heads kicked in pretty badly. So they could just kind of write it out that they just didn't make it. I mean, yeah. And it's one of the passages I read was that when Grigny saw how many dwarves were left, he cried. I mean, he actually wept. Yeah. Because there was so few. And, you know, that was one of the reasons why he left the Pantheon. He left and said... See ya. Yeah. Um, so. Now, there are a lot of Dwarden who were in the realm of heavens mm-hmm. that, you know, got into Azraheim and yeah. stuff like that. So All the dispossessed. <laughs> right. So, you know, you have to kind of ask yourself, what are you going to do with those guys? I don't know. Uh, maybe they didn't vaccinate their kids and they all died from a cold. But Well, I think you hit on it. Is They come back as part of the free peoples, you know. Yeah, but do you keep those models in the line then and, and keep running with them? But that, again, touches on, like, what do you do with free peoples? Right. Do you really keep all those old empire models in circulation, like, 15 no. years after they've come out? And, you no, know, you really do you don't. really want people – do players really want to keep buying old Germanic uh, pike bearers no. in the mortal realms when you got all this other insanely cool stuff? I mean yeah. – I don't want to get too off topic here, but, you know, humans have like an almost unlimited possibility of what you could do model-wise right. in, in the mortal realm. So why not just can all that old yeah. world stuff? And go and, with the new stuff. Right. And you're hearing it a lot in, you know, even in the Realm Slayer audiobook, you know, those lines of Kadasa, they sound like something amazing. And I can see them being, you know, something that exists in a new Battle Tome, Free Peoples, yeah. and a new line of models that come out where, you know, kind of like Imperial Guard. You're going to have Cadians. You're going to have Catechans. You're going to have oh, wow. Destroyans. Yeah, you're going to have awesome. all that other stuff. I mean, they're all going to be Free Peoples. Yeah. But there's going to be all these different things that you can do with them. And I kind of think that's where they're going to go. But as far as the Duarden go, one thing that I read that struck me. When I was doing my limited research in what's available, lore. yeah, yeah, and it said the Dwarden leaders sought to establish laws that would see them prosper despite the age of chaos. And I believe this came from the Ko book. They wished to avoid the pitfalls of the past, for the rule of kings had failed them, and even the gods had deserted them. All the survivors had seen the fate of those that awaited the divine aid of Grungni. Grimnir or Sigmar. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, that's a very, uh, uh, a very um, angry group of people. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, they got a case of the butt hurts. Bad. Which, Both of them do, well, Fire Slayers and KO. Yeah, well, well earned. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to 
minimize it. Yeah. Because they and, were abandoned. And if anything, I think the Duarden factions that we have now really show how upset people are who were left in the mortal realms when Sigmar. Yeah. When he closed the doors. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they, they really exemplify, you know, the fire slayer, you know, they're both uh, mercenary style armies, you know, they've kind of retconned some of that stuff with like the fire slayers a bit where they're not as likely to, I guess, to run around, you know, with chaos and stuff, but they have a much more deep seated hatred for chaos. Oh yeah. Oh, they did before, but you do see it where they're, they're like these very jaded factions and they're not like they used to be. It feels like where in the old world, if a dwarf gave you their word, Mm -hmm. that was it. And they kind of do that now, but they're always looking for a way to get out of it. Well, they're very, uh, they're very lawyerish about how they give their word. Yeah. They're kind of shady and I don't, I don't really like that. I mean, I, yeah, I know you want to get away departure. from, yeah, I know you want to get away from the old world stuff a little bit, but one of the things I always loved about the dwarves was how it, it's kind of tough to earn their loyalty, but once you have it, that's it. Like yeah. they've got your back forever. And now they're just like these shysty Jawas, yeah. you know, of the, of the mortal realms. And, uh, you know, one thing when we look through the KO book, mm-hmm. you know, for what, little bit of lore, Tiny has, bit of lore in there, yeah. you know that and i remember way back when that book came out you know uh dave at garage hammer yeah. mentioned it it's a bit light yeah on on the on narrative the side yeah. and um and it is if you read through that book there's really not much to go off of. No. but they the ko are just it almost they almost don't make sense in their narrative yeah, in like- that you have these guys that took to the sky in the age of chaos to get, yeah. you know, to try to, to survive. Yeah. And then apparently almost immediately turned on themselves. And the only way they could stop doing that was to create this set of laws that prohibited them from turning on each other. But they're not really laws. They're more like guidelines. <laughs> and they're constantly trying to find ways to get around those guidelines so mm-hmm. that they can fight each other. And it's just like, what? wait, what? Yeah, it's you know, strange. Why are you guys... Why can nobody be on the same page here? And I I don't know. Their lore kind of just doesn't really make a lot of sense to me in some ways. It's, yeah, it's very, very strange in that almost like the KO were turned into some sort of Viking pirate fusion thing. Ultra capitalist Viking pirate. Yeah. You know. And whereas the Fire Slayers were turned into kind of this just uh single minded gotta find Urgold, gotta find this, we'll do anything, you know, just a whole race of cell swords who will keep a book of grudges, who will do all this other stuff, and yet have kind of almost no flavor to them. Yeah. You know, they're all kind of stamped out of the same mold. I was listening to uh the Eight Lamentations War Claw. Okay. You know, and the, and the traitor dwarf there, who's actually, who, yeah, basically flipped his nose to Grungni and sold out all the rest of the people around him. His justification was, hey, listen, I've been following Grungni for all these years, just this once. I wanted to get paid for my blood. And I'm like, wow, that's so not dwarven yeah to to basically you know and he tells the main character who works for grungni that you know you better watch it because gods do nothing but lie to you and they're like money lenders they take more than they give the whole you know the dwar the I, the prevalence of the dwarven dwarden willingness to say screw you to the gods i mean part of that has to do i'm sure with Grimnir being dead and Grungni being absent. Yeah. And yet, I, I just, I wonder if, and this is kind of where we're going to focus our, our discussion today is, where are they headed? How are they going to tie these all together? How is this going to work for them as a race, the Dwarden race? What's their, are they going to have an end goal or are they just going to be mercenaries? Are they just going to be sellswords forever? Yeah. And I don't know. I don't, I would hate to see a Duarden race 
that was based like that. That was based on out ah, of heck with it. Yeah, it it doesn't have a lot of flavor to me. No. I guess I should say like I'm a little biased. I've been a dwarf player yeah. pretty much since the beginning. And I, I absolutely love dwarves ever since I started getting into fantasy. You know, the Hobbit will do that to you sometimes. <laughs> yeah, just a little. I guess maybe I, I do have a little bit of a of a grudge because in the old world, I remember when that the dwarf stuff was always so bleak. Yeah. You know, they're always a dying race like the elves, but at least the elves had, I don't know, it always seemed like they had a little more going for them. And the dwarves were constantly just closing off their kingdoms and, yeah. and dying off and all this stuff. And and then when that eighth edition dwarf book dropped, the way that the, the narrative was written in that story was Thorgrim kind of came out and was like, you know what? I'm done with the book of grudges. I'm tired of adding yeah. to it. We're going to do something about it. We're going to start striking out some of these grudges. And if that means <laughs> nice. that we go out in a blaze of glory, then damn it, that's the Let's way we're do it. doing yeah. it. And so it gave dwarves such an upbeat feeling, which they'd never had yeah. before. And then, you know, they have the end times and the dwarves just go out like an absolute joke. Yeah. So that was really upsetting. And then to see the way they introduced dwarves, I'm sort of Dwarden, yeah. and Age of Sigmar has just kind of felt like a double slap in the face, you yeah. know, that they're these like, you know, like these cell swords that don't, their their words mean nothing yeah. and they'll turn on you at the f a flip of a dime. And, you know, if you got, oh, you got an ounce more Urgold, then cool. We'll just yeah, totally we'll take slaughter yours. these other guys or yeah. we'll just kill all of you to yeah. get our gold. That's all we care about is our gold. And even in the, even in the sidebars in the book, there's, there's in both of them, there's these stories about how, you know, like this one city uh, paid these dwarves to defend them from a chaos war band, which they did. The leader marched up to the gates and said, okay, we're ready for our pay. The guy on top of the gate said, well, there's another chaos war band coming. We'll pay you when they're gone. And he was like, mm, yeah, no, that wasn't in the DLC. Yeah. Yeah. And they just walked away. No money, no gold, right. no nothing. And I'm just like, they, they bled for this place. And I, you know, it would have been weird if they had themselves sacked the town to get their money, but it would have been a little more, uh, if you're a sellsword, that's what you would do. You don't want to pay me? Okay, we're coming in. You yeah. Know? It, so it, it's just weird. They were, it was like, that sidebar was like, wow, how yeah. flavorless can you be? <laughs> you know? I've, I No. To be fair, I do kind of want to give Fire Slayers a bit of a pass. That book came out when AOS was still oh, very fresh. Yeah. They were one of the first armies. And I think that was back when AOS kind of hadn't found its, its footing, footing yet. Its footing yet, yeah. And so I'm very excited to see what this new army book is going to have. Yeah. And hopefully it'll be a lot richer. Uh, it'll talk about the lodges. And, yeah. You know, and they've, they've come out with some novels and stuff, too. I haven't really got into them. Well, Eight I'm, Lamentations is... I mean, it's all about Grungni going after these eight different right, chaos right. weapons. And, you know, he, he does feature in all of them. Yeah. And it's kind of, it's, it's, I almost want him to just step out there and grab all the Dwarden by the, by the beards and say, all right, look, yeah. I understand we had issues in the past. Now we're all on the same team. Let's do this. Or like you said last week last two weeks, two <laughs> weeks ago, what if bringing back Gortrek was not uh, just a silly little plot book that would sell really well? What if it's, hey, you know, Grungni's not so much of a god anymore and he's too much in the pocket of the Sigmar guy, but we have this guy, Gortrek, who's really cool, who slays, you know, god beasts and gods. Let's follow that guy. Yeah. And maybe he's the guy that's going to, I mean, we kind of said we were going to postulate where the dwarves might go yeah. in this episode. And I'm just wondering if there isn't a story thread here somewhere where Gortrek becomes not the god of the dwarves, but this overall leader that brings them together <laughs> and gives them a, a purpose, a focus. The Archeon of dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Archeon of dwarves. That would be cool. Yeah. Something. I mean, because they need something, and I'm I'm not saying they have to be tied together and have some sort of fun, happy ending kind of deal, but something that gives them real flavor and a real reason. 
Because right now, I mean, the Fire Slayers are a bunch of cell swords, and the KO are the same thing. Yeah, they're just kind of like you know in it for themselves. I'd rather see a bunch of Dwarden who are fighting for some. I don't care what. But just have it be something. And it doesn't have to be order. It doesn't have to, oh, we follow Sigmar, because I right. think that would be even worse, because I don't think they truly would be a Sigmarian kind of thing. But, yeah, but uh, dwarves used to be. Yeah. You know, that was always their thing, was humans are knuckleheads, but. But we got to help them. We got to help them. Yeah. Because they helped us. And that's just the way it works. Yeah. And now they don't, they don't follow any of that yeah. stuff. And I know there might be people saying like, well, you got to let the past go and let them go in a new direction. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, I get that, but give them a little more flavor than they're just. Yeah. If they're going to go in a new direction, give us some of that direction. Cause I don't see it right now. Yeah. I just see him as a mercenary army mm -hmm. that goes wherever, wherever the money is, wherever the gold is. Right. And that makes them kind of boring. Well, the, we've already have so many other armies that are kind of like. In it for themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, the Idanet Deepkin are really only there to get souls for themselves to figure right. out their problems. The Daughters of Cain are really only there for themselves yeah. to try to bring back Cain. Yeah, they're order and name only. Yeah, you know. and so it's like, all right, we got more order army. You know, at least destruction. You know, you'd think destruction would be that faction that was yeah. like that. And yet <laughs> they all bind together yeah. to, to, you know, bring about the bad moon or yeah. or whatever. So, you know, chaos is more organized than order is yeah. at this point. So I think that just, I don't know, it doesn't quite, just doesn't feel dwarvish, dwarden-ish to me. Yeah. So with the analysis of where they are, which is kind of ick for us, over, let's think about where they should go in our humble opinions. Right. Yeah, because so, I, I like both the armies, for yeah. sure. The Fire Slayers and the KO. Yep. I just, as far as their narrative bits, mm -hmm. it would be nice to see something a little different. I think for Fire Slayers, it would be nice if we could get more of a definitive answer on what the whole Grimnir and Urgold thing is. Yeah. You know, if they're actually trying to bring him back or if if – Every time they use the Urgold, it actually drains the essence of yeah. Grimnir till he's gone. Right. would be interesting, uh, which may open up a slot for Gotrick to yeah. step in. Well, and it's kind of hinted at in the Lamentations, you know, the the guy that has the the rune of Grungni hammered into his arm. It's fading. So maybe their power is fading. The You know, I, we, Grimnir is like... In many, 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 many pieces, along with that dragon. What was the name of the dragon? I can't. Oh, uh, was is the um, uh, Magma Droth Queen? Yeah, Volcatrix. Uh, Volcatrix. Yeah. Sorry, I <clears throat> couldn't remember. You know, split all over the place. Grungni is. You know, he's on his. I don't know, sulking tour. Yeah. But and he's not really sulking. He's actually. You know, he's he's putting he's. The eight lamentations, he's trying to get rid of those chaos weapons. Right. So he's obviously doing stuff, but not But he's also in a self he's also in a self imposed exile. Yeah. Which is weird, you know, because he could probably get a lot more accomplished if he worked you know, with Sigmar, with Sigmar. maybe, you know. Uh, but could it be a sign that his power has waned so much that he can't work with Sigmar anymore? Possibly, or maybe something happened between him and Sigmar that yeah. they can't work together. Yeah, maybe. You know, maybe if he goes back and asks Sigmar to help him with these eight lamentations, because if Chaos gets their mitts on him, yeah. it's all over. It doesn't matter what their projects yeah. are. <laughs> and then Sigmar says, well, yeah, I'll help you with that. But first you got to help me figure out this yeah, Stormcast, Stormcast problem. Yeah. And he, you know, and they just come to a disagreement. Maybe that's why. They're not working together in the first place. Yeah, could be. You know, Sigmar, because Sigmar has been known to not want to really listen to anybody <laughs> and not be particularly smart about it, anything in the first yeah. place. Right. Nagash. <laughs> uh, How many times? Yeah. <laughs> so do we see Duarden in general moving towards a, a godless race where their gods fade away completely and 
And then what happens to them? Well, uh, it would be kind of, it would be a very interesting niche for them to fill of a race that doesn't have gods, just has very powerful leaders. Yeah. You know, whoever those are, Brock Grunison or whoever's in charge of the the KO council there. I don't is who's in charge of the council right now? Well, it's there's a representative from each yeah, of the sky that's parts. Right. That's right. And some of the And Brock's not one of them. No. So So yeah, and they have different numbers based on how much gold they have. Yeah. So yeah, I saw that breakdown. But <clears throat> the you know, maybe they're just gonna have powerful leadership or someone's going to, you know, something is going to bring them all together and move them toward a goal for that outfit. And maybe they don't, you know, maybe the Duarden as a race don't work together anymore. Maybe it's Fire Slayers doing Fire Slayer stuff and KO doing KO stuff. But, you know, without gods, without some superior being telling them, what to do and how to think. Huh. So, well, I mean, because there's no other faction, there's no other thing that does that. Well, you might you might argue that the Ideneth Deepkin, because Teclas turned his back on him. That's true. And look at the problems they're having. Yeah. They're not going through a happy time. No. And I guess you could say the same thing about Daughters of Cain, because Cain's not a thing. Yeah, but Marathi's got a pretty iron grip on them. Yeah. They're all pretty much snowed by her. And they and they do have – well, and both of those armies too, or well, factions, have a uni- universal goal. Yeah. Right. Where all the Ida and that deep kin are generally working towards trying to figure out yeah. their soul issue and all the yeah. daughters of Cain are, are generally – Trying to bring Cain back. Right. Whereas the K.O. are constantly fighting amongst yeah. themselves. The Fire Slayers are constantly fighting amongst themselves. Yeah. And so, they need something to – to unify them. You know, that that's if they're even going to be that kind of a force. Maybe the storyline doesn't want them to be a powerful nation. Well. Or, you know, a powerful force. Yeah, but they're order. Yeah. Which I get, you know, doesn't mean they have to be good guys or whatever, but right. have them be organized. Mm, yeah. Like order. A little bit. It's kind of weird when a chaos army is is more orderly, is organized, and an order army is chaotic. That mm-hmm. doesn't really <laughs> make sense to me. But but it does point out GW is willing to play with all of those old paradigms and say, no, this isn't going to be how it is. Yeah, and that again, that's fine. We kind of mentioned that that maybe that's that is what they want to do, but I think you kind of got to flesh it out a little more. Yeah. Give them, give them a little more, just some kind of a goal, especially the KO. Like, because we kind of have an idea of what Fire Slayers want to do. They want to try yeah. to bring back Grimnir. Grimnir, yeah. Whereas the KO, it's just like, okay, I guess we'll just get some Ether Gold and maybe we'll get more Ether Gold than the other guys and we'll be on top. Yeah. Woo. You know, it's, what, yeah, what, are, you, what are you guys trying to do? Like, I don't know. Yeah. And, and it's <laughs> the, Whichever one of the houses, or I can't say Skyports. This, Skyports, is in charge, isn't really charting a course for the whole KO nation. Yeah. They're just basically trying to keep things going the way they are and everybody getting wealthy. Well, well they're trying to keep themselves on top. Yeah. Too. You know, they, they almost strike me as like houses and men's or brands and mm. Yeah. You know, yeah, really dark not elves. Not quite or as drow. cutthroat, but it's still there. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. It's a strange thing for him. And I tell you, you know, I mean, I've already spilled the beans. My my ultimate, what I would love to see happen is Gortrek to not, not be a god of Dwarden, but to basically get them all on the same page and say, you know, you can do what you want. You can still have your little, your sky ports and your little infighting thing. But here's the deal. When something threatens one of us, we all show up and we all do the thing. Yeah. So, and I mean, I think they would be more of a force and the fire slayers for sure would be way cooler if 
something happened. They opened up the book and said, all right, we're going to go fix this now as a race, not yeah. just as a lodge. Is that Gotrick's MO, though? No. Yeah, it's not see, his that's... thing. Is I don't think he would ever do that role willingly, and that could be a really great fiction arc. No. Him coming to realize that he is someone that they all listen to, and he's got to watch what he does and says, and he has to start acting, you know, kingly. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and he has to sort of be that role model, and you could you could write books about how he struggles with that that's true so that would be interesting yeah now what about like a new Dwarden faction what do you think that would be feasible and if so what what do you think it would be like uh you know they talk about in one of the books that there's other dwarven races out there in the realms that survived but what if they did i mean you have sky dwarves you have magma you know fire dwarves what if you had a dwarden race that was more akin to the realm that they're in so i know they talked about this in the realm of life that there were dwarves that mined basically wood they did their stock and trade and their artistry was all with wood. What if you expanded that and had dwarves, a race of dwarves that just used whatever was available to be their stock and trade. They were true artisans. They were the true, you know, we can make anything out of this wherever it was. If it was in the realm of beasts, they made stuff out of the bones of great big animals or, you know, something. I, I, I'm yeah. just pot shotting here, sh- scattergunning this stuff. But, you know, I, I know we read part, one of the stories talked about in the realm of life. There was a group of dwarves that did nothing but their their mining was wood. They mined a type of wood. And it hmm. was, that was their thing. So well, I know in the Eight Lamentations book, there's a whole scene where they're up in the tops of these trees that have been hollowed out and it's fire slayers yeah. that live in trees. Yeah. So that's really interesting. Um, I think what you could do, so you have like fire slayers, you yeah. know, which kind of, you know, fire, whatever. Yeah. And then you have the Karadran overlords who are up in the air and everything, you know, and then you kind of have dispossessed. You might, might be able to flesh them out and they're, you know, they live, underground and mm-hmm. stuff like they're normal dwarves yeah so yeah. you have your <laughs> earth yeah right so what if you did like um like a naval style dwarf army <sighs> dwarden you know oh or something or maybe like God. an Idna deepkin style you have water right and then you could have a rule where when you play all four of them they all put their powers combined <laughs> i knew that was good right i knew that was good and they create like a super dwarf who goes around and fights litter <laughs> No? <laughs> and, like, gives a life lesson at the end of every battle. Wouldn't uh, that be so morally wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Got options here. I'm an ideas man. Uh, yeah. It, that one's taken. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I feel like I got that from somewhere. I would like to see, you brought up naval dwarves. Yeah. You know, what if there was something sort of like KO, but... They were actually, like you said, we have air, we have land, why not have sea dwarves? And I'm not saying pirate dwarves, but what about, you know, super easy to say we just discovered these guys because they're on these large islands that float, that they've made float, and their whole world goes with them. They sail to a new, oh, look, we're in Gur. Hey, this is kind of cool. Let's sail around here for a while. Yeah, I think that leans too heavily on KO. That's kind of their gimmick. Yeah, that's true. I, give, I think if you're going to add another Dwarden race, you really just flesh out Dispossessed. Dispossessed, yeah. You know, and you go with that more traditional style. Maybe fold Ironweld into them. Yeah, something like that. So I know because the guy in Warclaw, you know, Eight Lamentations, <clears throat> he is a Ironweld arsenal guy. Yeah. You know, he's always building some contraption, you know, in, in Warclaw. 
he made, you know, use all of his uh, flash powder, his black powder and all that stuff to blow the hell out of that tavern. So, yeah. you know, Are you, you, it gives me hope for them. What about seeing some like really heavily armored type dwarves, Ooh. you know, Dwarden, kind of like the old iron breakers yeah. and, and stuff like that, but give them like more of an AOS treatment, you know, hyper fantasize yeah. them and, uh, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe something like that. A whole race of iron breakers. Oh, <laughs> you know, just nothing but we are heavy infantry. And our lightest infantry yeah. guy is your heavy infantry. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. That Big old, be. like, tower shields oh. marching forward. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. ultimate box or all the guys in the front rank lock shields and then everybody else puts them overhead so you can't shoot into them, around them, out of them. Yep. And they're going to hit your line. And they got big old pikes. Kind of like the uh, the Iron Hill Dwarves yeah. in uh, the Middle Earth. Middle Earth, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Something along those lines. And maybe they ride some really heavy cav. And... Yeah. Oh, man. That would be cool. Could be fun. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of places they can go, and I don't know. Or, well, you know, you just say, screw it. And Dwarden have already gotten two factions. Let's see some humans. Yeah. For a change. Well, yeah, I don't think we'll see another Dwarven faction for a while. Yeah. They have two, and there's other things that need to be fleshed out. So, but, I mean, I think at some point they've got to come back and do lore on Dwarves. And I'm not saying it has to be a battle tome. I'm, it could be just fiction. Which I'd be fine with. You know, yeah, definitely. Something that ties them together. And you don't have to change the way they play. You just have a cool book that says, all the fire slayers are now united under this one big leader guy. And so. Well, maybe we could, we could kind of bookmark this. And when the new fire slayers book mm-hmm. drops, we'll read through Come it and back see out. if. Like, okay, yeah, they did kind yeah. of give them a direction or yeah. something like that. So I think we should. Because we've got to be willing to face up to our. Wow, you were so wrong. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, and if, if you're listening to this and you got any ideas of, you know. Where they should go. Where they should go or or what your thoughts are on like possibly a new Dwarden yeah. faction and what they could do. Especially, you know, because I think the KO really showed us anything is possible. Yeah. With the mortal realms. Oh, gosh, yeah. So, you know, they don't have to be. Dwarves that live underground and mine gold and nope. have big beards and well, they all have big beards, but yeah. I think those stereotype days are gone. Yeah. Those Tolkien esque, this is what a dwarf, this yeah. is what now no, those are gone. They've pretty much stamped that out. And that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, let's I just let's... wish they weren't such money hungry D bags. Yeah. We would much rather have them be dwarfy dwarves. Well, so. just I don't know, something that Shows order. And honor. Yeah. You know, something. Some sort of racial pride. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of, oh, yeah, we'll honor that. Oh, wait, they used a semicolon instead yeah. of a colon. Death to them all. Yeah. <laughs> like, wow. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So definitely let us know what you think. If we're dead wrong or if you have a better idea for where the Dwarden should go as a, as a peoples, yeah. let, let us know. But other than that, I think we're going to wrap it up, right? Yeah. I think that's about all we got for them. Yeah. I mean, it's funny that you can't really find a lot of lore for AOS dwarves. I mean, if you go back to end times, there's oh, obviously yeah. gobs. But AOS dwarden, it's very, very Not thin. Much. And if you look over there at the lexiconum, there is a one-page sheet of all the named dwarves. And it's it's just sad that there's so few that matter. And and really, they've just come out recently with uh, the eight lamentations yeah. stuff and yeah and whatnot. And the well, that's what gives me hope is eight lamentations is out, and then bringing Gortrek back. Right. You know, they're hopefully they're doing something. With <laughs> Save that. us, Josh Reynolds. You're yeah. our only hope. You're our only hope. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. He he's pretty much single handedly bringing it all along. Yeah. So. Hopefully we'll see more. So, we done? 
I think, yeah, I think we're good. Okay. Is there anything else you want to tack on here to the end of the show? Any shout outs or anything? No? No, I don't think so. So hopefully next time we'll have Ryan back with us. He's yeah. still at work. We just talked to him a little bit ago and he's still slaving away at work. We have issues. Yeah. So. Sorry, Ryan. All right. Till next time. Bye. If you would like to get in touch with us, you can reach us on our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash Rolling Bad Podcast, all one word. Our Patreon page is at www.patreon.com slash Rolling Bad Podcast, again, all one word. The Twitter account for the show is at Rolling underscore Bad, and our individual Twitter accounts are for me, at Bill Castello, C-A-S-T-E-L-L-O. And for Ryan, he is at RT Gamer. All of our guests on the show will have their contact information in the show notes, and any products that we mention will also be similarly placed in the show notes. The music for the show is used courtesy of Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com and used under the Creative Commons license. I just completely lost my train of thought. Yeah, I was wondering yeah, there. I just went. That was weird. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was like oh, you like you were falling asleep as you were talking. Yeah, you were you were talking about just I did. I really just zoned out for a second. There. That was weird. <laughs> and I'm not even tired or anything. I just yeah. completely went. What was mm-hmm. it you were saying about the last comment you made? I was, I was talking was, about how things are seems like things are a little more expensive. No, before that. Oh, three thirty blood letters for three hundred points? No, before that. <laughs> I oh, was flipping Jesus, through this man. thing and I was out. I wow. was literally out. Did my voice put you to sleep, huh? No, it's. A, I don't know why. I just. I was looking through these scrolls and I was like. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>